Let's go. Welcome, everybody. Oh, come on, Apple Pencil. Why do you have to do this to me? Okay, general rules. You know this. Then we'll do this. I intend to learn and be a better person in every way, every day. I'm good, I'm calm, I'm happy, I'm kind, I'm good, I'm calm, I'm happy, I'm kind, I'm good, I'm calm, I'm happy, I'm kind, I'm good, I'm calm, I'm happy, I'm kind. Alright, let's hope the pencil works now. Why did it suddenly stop working? Ah, yeah, it works. Alhamdulillah. So, here's a quick recap. Last week, we had a comprehension revision. Very basic comprehension, right? And I talked to, talk to you about the method. And I said, use the method if you want to. Otherwise, forget it. Do what you need. There is no rule. But if the method helps you, you love the method, it makes you feel like joyful, lets you sleep at night with a smile on your face, hey, go ahead and do it. Let's go. Baba, to question one. Okay, and go. Yes, the method is a tool. All right, Sean, I'll check it out later. Yes, it is just a tool. Uh, how are the results so far? Okay, wow, what a good start, everybody. We have a majority of correct answers. I know this passage is familiar. I changed some stuff. Yeah, almost the same. What I did was I selected the questions that uh, got the lowest scores and then I put them back here. Yeah, where's Ash? Ash is gone. So we have Misty. And guys, those who just joined, look at me in my Harry Potter robe. Woo! My little, where's the Hogwarts? Hogwarts crest. Yo, represent. I use iPad, I'm not able to join through GenieBook. Okay, Yuhan, if you're on your iPad, download the GenieBook app, make sure it's updated. Nancy, same thing, use the GenieBook app. But if you're on your PC, you go to the GenieBook website. Okay. Let's end this in three, two, one. Okay, no, no, let's give more time. Uh, answers are still coming in. I'll give you a bit more. Just 85 answers. Um, Claire, yeah, that's it, Harry. Okay, well, let's end this in three, two, one. Boop. Okay, we have 68 correct answers. 97 people did not answer. That's weird. We have 111 people here. So that's that's weird. Okay, so seven four sixty eight. Right. Off the bat, we know that Masta decided uh not Masta, Misty decided on her goal at a very young age. And instead of waiting, she went ahead to do her stuff. At five. Five years old is a very young age. I remember last time we counted down, right? 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. Kindergarten 1. That's an awfully young age. And at that age, she said, you know what? I'm going to go be a Pokemon master. And she carried on doing her stuff. And by the time she was 8, she defeated 330, 333 trainers. That's a lot of work for a very young age. So she's definitely determined. Okay? Let's look at number 1. The word is passive. Passive is the opposite of active. Active means to do something. Passive means to wait and it will be done or you, you don't really do anything. For example, uh, there are two kinds of income you can earn. Income. There's active income and passive income. Active income means you do the work, you get the money. So for example, uh, I teach a class, I get paid. I do a question, I get paid. I mark a worksheet, I get paid. That's fine. How about passive income? 
passive income tends to mean you don't do anything and the money still comes in. How does that work? For example, if I'm an author, I publish a book, it takes me maybe three months to a year to write the book, right? That's all the work that I do. But once it is published, I can be sitting at home, sipping on a glass of water, and every time someone buys the book, I'm still getting paid. So from the time I sell the book, I don't have to do something again and again and again, but the money still comes in. So that's what you mean by passive. Okay, so it doesn't, you don't have to actively work. Forgiving, what, what is she forgiving? Who did she, who, who wronged her? And so, yeah. And last one, we don't say intelligent because we don't know whether it's easy or difficult to be a Pokemon master. Maybe it's just a very straightforward thing. You just need to put in the effort and not use your brains, right? So we don't assume. Next, Babar question two. Let's go. For all those who just joined, what am I wearing? I'm wearing my Harry Potter robe. I'm a wizard today. See, Harry Hogwarts. Uh, to be honest, it's quite warm. I'm going to take this off, man. Oh my goodness. Dear Lord, that's warm. It's kind of a warm day as well. Oh my God. I, you know what? I might have to take out the robe. It's just, uh, it's just kind of warm. Brandon, Brandon says... Brandon, you can't join with Chrome. Can you tell us what happens or what happened? What is the error or what is the problem you face? Meeting time out. That's weird. Connection time out. Uh, close the browser, open it again, and go back to GenieBook. Hopefully it'll work because, yeah, okay. I, some of you, a few other people say the same, right? Yeah, we don't know what's happening. It might be a problem on Zoom. So as with all technical issues, you leave and you refresh or close and switch it on again and it works. Just like on my iPad, do you remember in the last few in the last few lessons I couldn't pair the iPad excuse me, I couldn't pair the iPad with my laptop. I just have to keep switching it off and on again and then it starts to work. It's just an IT thing. Okay, Brendan, it's all right. If you can't, then you can try a different browser or you're, you're still on Zoom, right? You join us via Zoom, is it? Because I can, obviously I can talk to you. Yeah, okay. However, whatever works for you, do it first. Uh, we'll see if we can solve it. Okay, let's end this in three, two, one. All right, we got a high score. Hey, okay, where are the results? Ninety four eight five seven. Okay, so um, number three is definitely a meme that's out. Now let's look at number two. He had done another mistake and was hiding it. Is it possible? Definitely possible. But then the passage says nothing about that. So let's not make stuff up, guys. Keep it real. Don't make things up. Don't add details to the passage. Right back at you, Zachary. Never letting up, I guess. Now... If we look at number four, again, we have another possible issue. His teacher was about to call the clinic, right? Yeah, could be. But what clinic? Did he even say he went to the clinic? Did the teacher say what she was going to do or what? Right? Nothing. So we don't assume. Never assume or imagine. If you really want to, write a story after your, your paper. Take out a sheet of paper, imagine everything. Next, Baba, question three. R2, go.
as a member of questions. Does look familiar, right? But I changed it a little bit. Yeah, okay, everyone, let me just uh, make an announcement. There are a bunch of you who are having difficulties connecting. It says connection timed out or something like that. We are aware and we will tell the technical side. We have no idea what's going on. It's just, it's just weird. Okay, so the moderator just sent a message to all of you. She says, hi, for everyone who can see this message, you are already on the Genie Book chat, which means if you don't see that chat, you are not on Genie Book chat. All right. It could mean you are on Zoom chat. Yeah, Brandon. Okay, Brandon, Thaddeus. Uh, I don't know. The most I can say is we start and join again. Jacqueline, yeah, if it works on your phone, then okay. I don't know what's going on. Some days Zoom just. Yeah, okay, so Shanice says that she can attend via Zoom. So for today, if you cannot attend via the website or the app, join via Zoom. Okay? Hmm, maybe it's a problem with our website. We will let them know. Okay, let me let them know. We have 30 seconds left. Oh yeah, they already informed. So we'll just see how. I don't know if it's about a different device. It usually works without a, without a hitch. So we have no idea. Yeah, Lihan is, I think Lihan is right. Usually the, like the website has an issue, but not the app. Okay. Yeah, for those of you who can't do bubble questions, that's okay. You're here to learn, right? And, and you know what's the best part? You get to see my handsome face. Woo! And I'm wearing a Harry Potter robe today. I'm not going to do it on Thursday, I think, because it's kind of warm. So there you go. Special for you guys. <laughs> All right, time's up. Let's look at the answers. Not a high score, but uh, hmm, okay. Right. We will look at the we will look at the options one by one. Number one, there was a drought. Okay, that's true, but it doesn't totally answer the question because can you do you see the logic here? just because there's a drought doesn't mean you have to leave right people tend to live at their country even though there's a drought they only leave when there's a very very important reason for them to which is number three difficult to inhabit how do we know that because it was a welcome relief and they finally have access to water so they were kind of like, oh my God, what's going to happen? It was difficult. That's why we have to give a little bit more details. Okay. What is a drought? A drought is when there is no rain and there's no water. So the rivers have dried up. You're too far from the sea, no rain, it gets dry. Okay. Usually, and usually with heat, dry and hot, not a very pleasant combination. What about a famine? A famine is no food. So you can imagine in Singapore, uh, no food will mean all our grocery stores and all our supermarkets are empty. We don't have many farms, but in places where there are farms, a famine will mean that all the animals have died. So no animals, uh, crops have died. So there's really no food. And what is a nomad? Over here. A nomad is a person that doesn't live at one place. They don't just stay there. Like most of us here are, are not nomads. We have lived in our country for years, maybe even in the same house for many years. But nomads tend to move from place to place, either because of the seasons or because of trade routes, stuff like that. So you find that nomads don't have physical, like, 
permanent houses. They either have tents or something like that. So they can pack up and leave. Okay. So James says he's a nomad. That's cool. All right, let's look at number four. The drought had wiped out their food supply. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, it is possible. It is possible that because of the drought, all the animals died, but we don't know, so we don't assume. Okay. That is, you have a question? I see you raised your hand, or is it just you did it because for fun? Let's go to bubble question four. Okay, go. Okay, it's all right, Thaddeus. Jacqueline is right. Sometimes rain can cause a disaster. That's true. There is supposed to be a balance, right? Too many things, too much or something, or too little or something can be bad. Ah, so James says he goes to many countries for his dad's work. Ah, oh, that's, yeah, that's... I think that counts as being a nomad, maybe. Because you might not know when, you, when your dad might switch, right? Yeah. Tommy is here. I don't know why he's, he's here. Actually. This is a recap, everybody. So the first five questions are a recap. And usually for recap questions, I change things a little bit. So that you have to think a bit more. I'll change the names or the options or the words. So I changed the passage a little bit. Okay, let's end this in three, two, one. Boop. It's a high score. Hey, all right, three twelve. Nine. Okay, there, okay. This is pretty obvious, so uh, okay, I'm just quickly going to go through it. First, Billy folded his arms. And then when you see the dialogue, it says he asked, we mean Billy. We don't want to repeat the name Billy, Billy, Billy. Okay, so Billy asked. After Billy asked the question, Nigel rolled his eyes. He opened his mouth. So now we're talking about Nigel. And then he wanted to speak. But then he stopped and smiled. Kind of annoying, right? Which meant his friend. Who is his friend? His friend is Billy. So his friend is annoyed, right? Red with annoyance. So Billy is annoyed. So B must be Billy. So if B has to be Billy, then we know that this one's out, this one's out. We're left with A. Who rolled his eyes? Well, it's clear. Nigel rolled his eyes. Simple. Next. Baba, the question five. Jalen Ng, you have a question? I see you raised your hand. My name is Jeff. Hi, Jeff. Go. Jalen, this is pretty obvious. What does TBH stand for? TBH stands for To Be Honest. Oh, Stella, what are you doing? Excuse me, girl. Please don't disturb me. We're having a class right now. Hmm. I guess you guys don't remember the method. We have a low score, you know. <laughs> Are those actual glasses? These glasses have no degree. You want to see? Check it out. Even when I move my lens over the screen, nothing changes. See? No degrees. If there's degrees, when you look through my glasses, the image will warp. I can take it out. Oh my, I'll wear it for a bit. Yeah, I'm going to take out my glasses. They're too reflective, so you can't see my beautiful eyes. Let's end this. Yeah, I'm wearing it for fun because it looks kind of Harry Potter, right? He's got his round glasses. Let's end this in three, two, 
One. Boop. Wow, ladies and gentlemen, it's a low score, a very, very low score. It's a sad day in the history of P4. We have a low score. Wow. So this is the method that I teach you guys. When you come to a comprehension question, the first thing you do is you read the questions, not the passage. Mr. Fawaz, why do we read the questions first? That's so weird. Uh, 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 think about it. When you, if you read the passage first, you're just reading a story. You have no idea what is important and what is not. You'd be like, uh, okay, so what's the point? But if you read the questions first, then you find out two things. Number one, you already find out what you need to know because the questions, those are the questions, right? And the second thing, from the words in the question, in the questions, you can figure out what the passage is about. You already have an idea. So you get so much information just from reading the questions. But Mr. Fawaz, I don't like to read the questions first. I enjoy reading the passage first. Remember what I said in the earlier slide? Use the method if you like it. Okay? If you don't like it, fine. Read the passage first. You want to know a secret? I read the passage first. Because I have an amazing memory. Everything sticks in my head. Anyway, today we're talking about adjectives. Revision 1 because there will be a second revision in September. Let's talk about adjectives. Here's a recap. Adjectives describe things, nouns, places, objects, people, you name it, you got it. You are a smart person. This is a cute cat. I am a weird teacher. Hmm. So adjectives can have different flavors, right? Why do I mean flavors? I put them in inverted commas because it's not literally a taste. It's an idea where you can have something like um, for example, you can have something uh, you can have the word sumptuous and you can have the word delicious. They kind of mean the same thing, but they have slightly different flavors. Sumptuous tends to give you the idea like, oh, so delicious, chef's kiss kind of delicious, right? Or even scrumptious, ooh, scrumptious. Scrumptious tends to give you the idea of like crumbliness, maybe like a cheesecake with a cookie, cookie base, right? Scrumptious or biscuits. If I say ice cream is scrumptious or jelly is scrumptious, eh, it doesn't really match. I mean, it's not wrong, but you see what I mean? Different flavors. Oh, we're all getting hungry right now. So the last point is use adjectives realistically. What do I mean? I know lots of kids will learn their big words and these funky adjectives and they will try and force to use the, they force these adjectives into their writing. Let's not be lame. Okay, remember DBL? Yeah, remember DBL? Advice to live for. Advice to live by. DBL, right? Don't be lame. If the adjective matches your writing, use it. If it just seems weird, it's okay. No one's going to think you're not so smart. <laughs> and so you have to be natural. When your writing is natural, it's very fun to read. The most natural pieces of work are the most engaging for a reader. Even if you don't use big words, like Roald Dahl's books tend to use very simple words. But because you can feel his writing from his heart, it's very fun to read. Okay? You want to connect with your reader. That's, that's why. Let's go to bubble question six. Round one. My favorite sound. Round one. I love that game, by the way. Okay, let's go. Yeah, like Matilda. Matilda was very simple English. Or Danny, the champion of the world. Or I think my favorite is Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Jacqueline. You can give it, you can send it to my bit.ly. Remember my bit.ly? So I can share it with the web, on my website and I have time to think about it. Thanks for asking nicely, Jacqueline. 
I appreciate it. Okay, I see why you guys have a confusion here. Good, I can teach you something. Claire asks, what is DBMF? I have a guess. DBMF is don't be Mr. Fawaz, am I right? You boy got it. Hi, Elise. What's my bit.ly? This one, bit.ly slash. This is a link where you can send me questions and your writing. I can read and give you feedback if you like. Or your, all your random things, your random comments, queries, questions, jokes, send them to that. Okay, time's up. I gave you guys a lot of time because there is a new word and it's kind of tricky. One, two, five, eleven, seventy, eight. Now you guys might be confused. Mr. Forward, isn't it called classical music? Yeah, there's a thing called classical music, but it's different from what we're talking about here. Let me read to you the definition of classical, okay? So if you talk about classical, it means it refers to ancient Greek or Latin literature, art, or culture. So um, when you listen to music like Beethoven, Chopin, all those orchestra, orchestra symphonies from the past, those are examples of classical music. If you listen to pop songs, rock, rap, that's not classical. That's modern, I guess, excuse me. Okay, so what we want is the word classic. And classic is something that is uh, that is not new, but is already recognized as, hmm, that's good. Let me read to you the definition of classic. Judged over a period of time to be of the highest quality and outstanding of its kind. Means it has been around for some time and people just agree, it's good. The classics. So you can have classic movies, classic songs, classic furniture. We are talking about things that have been around for a long time and people know, yeah, that's good. That's a good brand. That's a good sound. That's a good show. Okay. Again, if you're talking about the old school music, da -da -da -dun, da -da -da -dun, that's classical, slightly different. Okay. Again, we have a different word, right? So in, if you don't understand what trope is, it's like a thing, uh, like a feature, a theme or a style, something that they do that you can recognize. So do you, re do you realize in a lot of movies, whenever there's an explosion, the main character turns away and then the explosion happens behind him? That's a very common trope. You know what's another common trope? Whenever they show you a scene of someone trying to look for something, they will run, they will like run, 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 run. Look at the camera, then turn the other way. They will go and check behind. You see that? Here's another classical, here's another classic trope. When a character wakes up at night and they want to go to the kitchen, they don't switch on the light. They just open the refrigerator and use the light from the fridge. It's a very, it happens a lot, right? So that's it. Now, bubble question seven. Two hours later. So, okay, you know what, guys? I have to take out my Harry Potter robes. It's getting warm. I can't, I can't do this. I can't do this anymore. This is what happens when you buy a cheap robe off of Shopee. Oh my God, it's warm. Oh, oh my God. Oh, wow. I will teach you like this now, okay? Oh my god. Ah oh man, I'm not supposed to wear t-shirts. They say you gotta wear something with a collar. I was really hoping to be able to wear the robe for the entire lesson. <laughs> Can you guys excuse me for for my lack of collar? Don't be angry, don't complain to your parents. Mummy, Daddy, I'm so disappointed. 
My genie class lesson today was horrible. My teacher's shirt didn't have a collar. <gasps> no collar? I'm going to complain right now. Hello, genie book. I want to complain. Today you have this weird teacher, Mr. Fawaz, who wore a raincoat, right? After that, he had no collar. Yes, he had no collar. Are you serious right now? I'm cancelling my subscription. Boop. Can we not do that, please? Spare me. Okay, let's end this in three, two, one. Boop. We have a high score. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for not complaining. Yay, here's to more work for me. <laughs> 35, 31. Okay, let's go through some meanings here. 28, 152. Now, if you realized, I did not have the option generous. I wanted to put that option in, but I refrained because if you think about it, you are generous, my king. Still makes sense. It's perfectly grammatical. People don't usually say that because you're talking to a king, right? When you're talking about when you're talking to someone who's very powerful, who has a very high status, high, or some people say status, high status, you tend to be more respectful. And if you live in a country with a king, the king rules over all of you. He has the most power. So we tend to say you are most kind, you are most generous. It's a form of flattery. You make them feel good okay that's why the answer is you are most generous not most generously how about mr Fawaz? he's more generous more generous than who we didn't have another person in this passage we didn't say my king the other king offered me half a sack of gold you are more generous nope there's no comparison so we don't say more okay you are generously, I, I don't know, are these memers? I give you a half star because I'm not sure. All right. Babur question eight. Let's go. Let's go. Nice. Ili says, if I don't tell lame jokes, I will be a perfect teacher. <laughs> Oh, well, <laughs> got to be imperfect, you know. How do I get these songs? I downloaded them from the internet. Ili says he, he is saying the king is more generous than himself. Okay, you can kind of look at it that way, but it's not very obvious. So I, I get it. I get what you mean, but it's not very obvious. So we don't usually say that. So these sounds that I have taken are in popular memes and because they have been spread around the internet, they are okay to use. Okay. Thank you. Fung Yong. Jeff, Jeff, please. Ting Ray, don't be Harry Potter. I think we can end this question soon. We've got uh, quite a lot of answers. Okay, three, two, one. 109, all right. 40, 7, and 28. It is well known that in Japan, you can leave your valuables unattended. What does unattended mean? It means that you don't have to watch over them. I'm, I'm, I'm serious, man. I saw it. We went to a mall and Right at the front of the mall, there's this whole area where people just left shopping carts full of things they had already paid for. Fully paid for, so that they could go shop elsewhere or get food. No one touched those carts. Carts, okay? It's, it's a real thing. So we're talking about something in Japan. So when we talk about something far away, we have to use that. That level of safety all the way in Japan. Okay, not this, because we are not in Japan right now. If I'm in Japan, I'm saying, look at, look at me, I'm in Japan, in the middle of the streets with $5 million worth of jewelry on my neck. This level of safety, ah, if I'm in Japan, then I say this, but I'm not in Japan. 
Okay. And from the phrasing of the question, from the phrasing of the sentence, you can assume that the writer of this question is not in Japan. Because if you're in the country, you will tend to make it uh, known. Asha asks, are there any guards? No guards. It's just trust. I'll give you an example of what I've seen in Singapore as well. So a lot of times when you go to coffee shops like Starbucks or Coffee Bean, I find a lot of teenagers like to leave their stuff on the table, their handphones or their laptops in their bags, and then to go and buy food. So at first I thought to myself, oh my God, that's so irresponsible. Like, why would you do that? But after a while I realized they feel safe. They feel safe knowing that no one's going to take their stuff. And I, re and I felt very proud that we are able to do that in this country. And so instead of being very angry and looking at them like, oh, this person, I want to help make sure that stays the same. You get what I mean? So when you see people leave their things around, you keep an eye on them. You keep an eye on the person's laptop. We help each other. That is a beautiful society. And if we, have, if we can maintain and improve upon this, that's amazing. Okay? Babur, question nine. Is it because they don't want people to take their seats? I mean, they, they put their bags down, then they go and buy the stuff, right? So, I guess so. Bruh. Bruh. Go. Because, you know, if you want to buy, queue up and buy your stuff, it can be very inconvenient to hold all your things. Like, you have your laptop and your bag and everything. Then you want to carry stuff back. So, it makes sense to put your things down first and then queue up. Thank you. Is it Jeffet or Jeffet, right? Chengyang, go ahead, please. Okay, Jeffet. It's okay, Akilan. Claire, you can say that if, for example, you are friends with the king, or if, for example, the king, you have a higher rank than the king, like the king's mother, or the king's... Uh, teacher because otherwise that would be considered disrespectful is food uncountable it depends if you say a, a chicken wing that's countable one wing a slice of bread that's a slice but you don't say many bread you can say because many bread what what is the size how do you count a bread right it could be a slice it could be a loaf so you need to have that word there to describe the unit. Okay, three, two, one, boop. Is this a, okay, this is not a high score, but it's a decent score. 20, 140. Yes, I am. Excuse me, don't step my screen, please. Oh, you're going to mess it up. Oh my God. All right, how am I going to finish all of this food? Okay. Because you cannot count food. You can't say one food, two food, three food, four food. No. If you go to a restaurant and say, Hi, waiter, uh, can I have one food, please? They be like, What? You can't count. But you can count plates of food. So because we didn't say plates, it is food, therefore you have to use the uncountable. Uh, you have to use the singular, this. This food. How am I going to finish all this food? Okay? Not these, this is plural. No. Why do we not say that? Because the plate is before her. What is before her? Means it's right in front of her. Okay? Right in front of her. So it's near. And Baba, the question then. Just do it! No. All my songs are random, okay? That's why we can celebrate when we have a nice sound that suits the question. So I can't choose what plays next. We can only hope that you get what you want. Yeah, Charlene, let's hope the song comes up again next. Beverly, your surname is Carter, is that it? Or is that your middle name? What does tedious mean? Tiring. Oh no, Jada, that is nasty. 
Anis asks, why did I type Far Wizard on the chat? Because just now I was wearing my wizard robe. So I'm a wizard. I think I can wear it again. I'm not so warm right now. Elise hates the sounds. But why, Elise? Do you hate fun? <sighs> Jada, why? Is it, is it blood? You got to go to get it checked. Harry Potter is back. Okay, let's end this in three, two, one. Boop. Um, hmm. Less than 50% got this right. 74 and 76. Ah, interesting. Okay, I will define these words for you. So, Carter is known to be toot. Many people find his company quite tedious. That means they find spending time with him. Being around him quite tiring, just oh my goodness. Tedious can be used to refer to a person who's just very difficult to be around, like it takes a lot of your energy. And tedious can also be a task. For example, if you want to, uh, if you have a whole puncher that can only punch one sheet of paper at a time, and then you have a whole stack to file, Doing one sheet by one sheet by one sheet is a very tedious process. You see it? Very tiring. Right? That's tedious. Okay, so let's look at the words. We know that he's very tiring to be around. And then we have this thing, laconic. What is the meaning of laconic? Laconic is a style of talking that was uh, that origin that originated from this place called Laconia in Sparta, a Greek uh, state, country. I don't know why it's a, uh, like that place. Okay, because why? The Spartans, Spartans are people from Sparta, were very brief with their words. They try and they, they it's like a skill for them and a habit that they don't use long, 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 long sentences. So there was an example I gave a long time ago. A king sent a letter to the king of Sparta, Sparta, saying that uh, my kingdom will, uh, will, if you do not surrender to my kingdom, then we will send armies to march down your roads and destroy your houses. We will send ships full of soldiers, blah, 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 blah. A long, long message. And you know what the king of Sparta replied? If. Just one word, exactly. Yeah, you guys remember, right? If. Just one word. That's laconic. Okay? So very brief. So if you if your friend is very laconic, it's not tiring to talk to them. They don't go on and on and on and on and on. Succinct is very brief. Without being uh not long-winded. Being succinct is an excellent skill to have. You don't take too many words. Okay, brief is the same thing. But verbose means many words. You can say long winded. Oh no. Not fun. Okay. Everybody admires and enjoys the company of a brief and succinct person. That's all. Shall we proceed with more questions? Let's go. Babar question 11. Nice. Gotta love that Rick Roll drums. Go. It's an actual question, okay? I'm not Rick Rolling, you guys. Oh, Elise, it's okay. You can always like someone else's jokes, but that doesn't mean my jokes are bad. Elise, why not you go ahead and send me some of your dad's jokes on the bit.ly so that I can learn from someone who, who seems to be a good joker. Like, you know, we learn from those who are good, right? So that'd be nice. This is the one. What is a weekly? Weekly means every week. Iris, didn't I reply? I, I, I mentioned you, right?
Okay, let's give it a bit more time. I did, Iris. I see your name here, Iris Chisholm. I did, I did reply. Shout out to you. Go check the blog in. All right, three, two, one. Boop. Yeah, I do look like a witch. It's okay to be bored. Life is not supposed to be fun all the time. Boredom, actually, by the way, can I just digress? Boredom is what lets us come up with the most creative ideas. People came up with fun games because they were bored. If you are entertained, you don't need to come up with ideas. Think about it. So have some boredom sometimes. I am having fun, yeah. But there are days where I, where I intend, okay, try this out. Have sometimes, some, some, session, some hours or days in a week where you intentionally do not do an activity when you feel bored. You don't take out your phone, you don't take out a book, you just sit there and think, observe the world. You'll be amazed what kind of ideas can come to your head. Okay, a whole host of what tools were found in the dig site. Dig as in digging. People were digging, right? So obviously they, they are like archaeologists. They are trying to look for things buried in the from from way back in the past. Therefore, this answer makes the most sense. Primitive is old. Like um not advanced. You see what I mean? Before man got really intelligent, we had very basic things. Like a bit like a primitive knife. Just a sharpened piece of stone. You get what I mean? It can cut, but it's not perfect, not comfortable, primitive. Primitive man, early man, not so advanced. So that's the answer. And how many people got it? One, one, five. Now let's go on to the other words. Auspicious is totally irrelevant here. Auspicious means like a like a good omen. It tends to be a, like a very spiritual or traditional thing. For example, people will choose to get married on certain dates because it's an auspicious date. It's a good day. They believe that they get more blessings or it's a better day to do things. That's what auspicious is. Okay. How about savvy? If you are savvy means you understand something and you can do it well so if you say someone is tech savvy means they are okay with technology you give them a device they can know how to how to use it how to figure stuff out and when you teach and when you explain something to someone you can say savvy do you understand savvy uh, okay you learn something magnanimous is someone who is very generous so generous tools nah -uh. go on to bubble question 12. we have 15 questions okay so we're nearly there go that was a lightsaber by the way But Elise, Star Wars isn't a computer game. It started as a movie. There's no such thing as a boy's movie. A movie is a movie. You like it, you like it. I had I know many like I I have female friends who love Star Wars more than me. I don't know. Sometimes society says boys do this, girls do that. But you got to ask yourself, is it true? Sometimes, yes, boys naturally prefer certain things. So yeah, okay, Elise is right. Boys tend to prefer action like Star Wars and fighting and stuff. More boys prefer it than girls. It's just uh, genetically. But it's not only for boys. You can have girls who like it, it's fine. Okay, let's end this in three, two, one. Yeah, like the color pink. When I wear pink, people are like, ooh, wow, you, you wear pink? Duh, yeah, because why many men don't wear pink, I guess. Okay, 140. So, when someone uh, 
feels very irritated, then they're irritable. They just feel so like, ugh. Livid means very angry. It just doesn't seem to make sense to be so angry when you run out of coffee, like why? But if you think deeper, people usually drink coffee as a pick me up. Or to uh, mask their fatigue, to hide the, the fatigue. You know why? Coffee doesn't give you energy, okay? Caffeine tricks your brain. When you are tired, your, brain's, uh, your brain releases chemicals that says, hey, tired, tired. But caffeine blocks those chemicals. So when your brain doesn't receive those chemicals, you say, hey, okay, we can go. And that's why after the caffeine wears out, you can feel extra, extra tired. So um, sometimes people need that, otherwise they just feel very bad. And it could be a routine. Many people have routines. They do the same thing every day and it feels good. So when you suddenly break the routine, they don't feel so nice. Timid is scared. Why would he be scared? What is he scared of? No. Inconsiderate? No. It's about himself. Okay. Babur, question 13. This is going to be easy. Yep, let's go. <laughs> Amanda, that's not even how you spell it. Shalene, I did listen to that song. I watched the music video. So cool. Very different from this normal. Uh, Jada asked, can I get a dog? No, for several reasons. But I, I, will, I, will, I won't talk about it now, okay? I'll write about it in my blog. Clarendon, you can send the joke to my link, my bit.ly. Blog is the website that you, you publish posts, okay? When you type stuff out. That's blog with a B. But a vlog with a V is a video log. So you take a video of it. When can I post gaming videos? I don't know. Let's see how it goes. Okay, three, two, one, boop. We have two more questions, all right? Remember I said 15 questions. What just happened? What? When? Huh? Okay, never mind. 52, 30, 78, 109. Andre was truly a human giant. He was as what as he was tall. So we already have his height. Okay, he's tall. We don't say a person is long. <laughs> wow, you're very long, huh? What do you eat? No, no, we don't say that. You can say your hair is long or you have long arms. <laughs> oh, Elise found that funny. Yeah, that's good. Breath is used to measure objects. The length, breadth, and height of an object or even an idea, we will go into lot of, a lot of breath for this topic. It means we'll cover many, 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 many chapters. Okay, breath. He was as lengthy as he was tall. No, we, we don't describe people as lengthy. We can describe things like a movie, a lengthy movie. It took a very long time. A lengthy conversation. But he's broad, broad shoulders. That's why he's truly a giant. He's big and tall and broad. You see the idea? He's not tall and skinny. He's tall and broad. Tall and broad, okay? That's why that's our answer. Bubble question 14. Let's go. Love the vibes. Go. Elise, I want you to start using words like uh, positive words like I like or I enjoy. It's always I hate this, I don't like this. <laughs> Have positive words, Elise. I'm pretty sure you're actually a very chill person to be around, like a very nice person to hang out with. Yeah, you know, guys, when you, when you, yeah, I prefer other stuff. Perfect. That's an excellent, ooh, that's a bear, right? Um, when you want to 
have a happier life, use happy words. Instead of saying, oh, I hated that, you could say, oh, I might not buy it again. That's fine. Same idea, different words. Means different mindset. Okay, let's end this in three, two, one. Boop. Guys, how many questions are there today? I said it just now. <gasps> let's go. Thank you, everybody. Thank you to all of you who paid attention. Minimalist is something that is very, doesn't have much to it, not much design, not much details, not much. So if you say, oh, I'm a minimalist, then as a person, you don't have many things or you, you don't have so many um, complications in your life, I guess, right? So the, the furniture is modern and sleek. So sleek means very stylish and not so, um, not so not such a busy look you know what i mean cars look very sleek because they don't have like feathers and stars and sparkles coming out of them that's not sleek so minimalist is a similar meaning to sleek not the same but similar and we know it cannot match because it contrasted it's an opposite this vase is the opposite of everything else okay therefore slim also doesn't make sense because slim is sleek, very ooh, nice, not so big, not so busy. Current is today. Not old, not traditional, not ancient. So current means like modern, therefore no, not current. So we have quaint. What is quaint? Something that is old, but like stylish and nice. So can you imagine this vase there? Has a very traditional design, but people look at it and like, whoa, that's a nice vase, man where is it from like which era but it fits nicely okay that's why it's queen it's not out of place all right last bubble question then if you want to go you can go in fact if you want to go right now you can all right go yeah it could be from your mother's era from your grandmother's era why are people leaving already i don't know yeah, so if you guys want to leave, you can go ahead. Thank you very much for attending the lesson and forgive me for any shortcomings. Once you answer, you can go as well or you can wait because you will have a story time today. Okay, bye to those who need to go. There'll be story time, story time, story time. Shalina, I don't think I've heard of that. Erica, you know, actually what you said is that is exactly what I'm thinking about. For real. Thanks, Claire. Okay, Shannon, go ahead. Have your have a good dinner. Okay, three, two, one. Boop. Elise used the bitly. 95? All right. Despite her seemingly low profile, if someone is low profile, means they're not uh, so boisterous, not out there, not always the center of attention, not, not so famous, maybe. Seemingly, that means it seems like she's not so, not so well known. However, we, despite all of that, she is well known in certain circles, means in certain groups of people, maybe her friends, maybe her colleagues, for being very what and sophisticated. Sophisticated is a good thing. Like you have some kind of level of style. The slang we use is like atas. Okay. You know what's good. You have a very refined sense of style. Therefore, naive doesn't match. Someone who's naive is someone who is um, like easily fooled, maybe. Innocently. Like too innocent. You say, Hey, there's a unicorn outside the window. Be like, huh? Where? People say, come on, Fawaz, don't be so naive. Like, why do you believe someone so easily? That's what naive is. So naive is not really a nice word. So definitely not naive. But she is cultured. She's got a sense of taste that is refined. She doesn't just buy the cheapest things. Or she doesn't just do any old thing. She does what is good, what is quality. Backward is the opposite. If you're backward, means you're not advanced. So no. Doesn't match sophisticated. And brash is someone who is kind of like, um, 
how do I describe rash? Let's just read it to you. Yeah, like very rude and overbearing. Tend to try to overpower you and it's not nice to be with a brash person. So doesn't match sophisticated. Okay. Culture. All right, there we're done. So very quick things. Remember when you want to use your words, don't be so caught up with using big words. It's not the big words, everybody. It's the message. If people get your message, they will love what you say. All right. And if you don't know whether a word is an adjective, here's how you can test it. I still use it sometimes. Ask yourself, can you say, you are very boop, or that is very boop. So if you have the word speed, is speed an adjective? Let's test it out. You are very speed. That car is very speed. Doesn't match. So speed is not an adjective. That's what I mean. That's how we test words out. Okay? Yep, those who need to go, you may go. All right? If you want to stay, everybody, it's story time. Teacher Sarah Lynn, thank you very much for moderating. Today was a kind of a busy day. If you would like to leave, you may leave. Again, thank you very much. Say thanks to the mod, guys. Today was a very busy day for her. A lot of issues. So for those, for those who are staying, here you go. Story time. You are walking, where's my screen, okay. You are walking home from school one day on autopilot. That means you're not thinking, you're just doing. When something tugs at your attention, curious, you stop. Looking around, you sense something is amiss. Bye guys, thank you. Then it hits you. There's a side road to your left that you don't remember. You've walked this path for almost five years now. Surely you know it like the back of your hand. You stare down this path, racking your brain, and are forced to conclude that this road has seemingly appeared out of nowhere. You hesitate at first, then turn to walk down it. Because you're curious, right? Where does it lead? You have to know. The road is, the road is smooth, and the buildings on either side are featureless and drab. Featureless means nothing, no outstanding detail. No nice windows, no nice colors, just very boring. Drab is boring, like uninteresting. You can say a person is drab, which means they're just like a bore, not a fun, interesting person. There are no people, animals, no sounds along this path. It is strangely quiet. You get the feeling that there aren't even any ants or rats around. And that's scary, right? Usually there are insects occupying the space with us. If there's no insects, this is weird. The path winds sharply and unexpectedly, more than it should make sense. You turn a bend and let out a yelp of shock as you nearly bump into an old man that has appeared in front of you. Oh. Old man? He looks at you with concerned eyes, then shakes his head. Another lost soul, he says softly. You're utterly confused and a little insulted. Before you can react, the old man looks up sharply and blows sharply into your eyes. I shouldn't have said the word sharply twice. I should have used suddenly. The old man looks up suddenly and blows sharply into your eyes. You cry out as you stumble backwards, flinching and find yourself on your bed, perspiring. Huh? You are extremely disoriented. Nothing makes sense. To be disoriented means to have no idea where you are, what's going on. But all of a sudden, a strong meaning grips you. You finally understand the end. And that's the end. This is a very nasty cliffhanger, right? You'll be like, what? 